Let's give, let's give the Lord some, let's just spend a little bit of time worshiping him. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Just begin to start thanking him. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the worship today. Father, I thank you for the prayers. Father, I thank you for those that are set free from a spirit of fear. Father, I thank you that it's your anointing that goes forth and destroys the burdens and the yokes. Father, I thank you, Lord, today, Father, that we begin to see the freedom. Father, I thank you for the freedom of the spirit that we saw last week and in the services with my brother Steve. Father, I thank you, Lord, that as he ministered, that he plowed up some spiritual ground that we're now now able to begin to plant in. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this season. Father, I thank you that as we move into this season and take dominion over what the enemy's trying to steal, kill, and destroy, that we stand. We stand. Just begin to tell yourself, I'm standing. Say, I'm standing. I feel like the Lord is saying that that we need to take our stand. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we stand. We stand. Father, we stand firm in our faith against him in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Well, get your Bible out, and as you get ready to open it up, I I always say that, but then I know that most of you don't carry a Bible to church anymore. I'm not really sure what that says, but you can take your electronic device and go to version on that, but then we've become very screen dependent, which is all right. Just as long as you know where your Bible is at home and you actually use it, that's great. And so... um, we were going to continue with the series that we were in, the best year ever. How many guys uh, enjoyed a little bit of that service? Amen. Um, I, I encourage you to go back to December. I think it's December 13th on Harvest Stillwater on YouTube and listen to that, talking about uh, the anointing. And I really felt like that that's, that's going to see us into this year. I think through the pressing and the crushing of 2021 that is created an oil of the spirit which is the anointing of god that is going to be able to allow us to go into 2021 can i get an amen Amen. unless none of you were crushed in 2021 (laughs) a little bit of pressing we found out that in uh, in the pressing that the first time you press an olive it gets an oil to burn and that's what happened with jesus in the garden gethsemane that he was that was garden gethsemane means press an olive press and that he was able to then go to the Father and says, let this cup pass before me. Remember what he said? But nevertheless, let it be according to thy will. And what that was is there was a pressing which then gave him an anointing. Then the Holy Spirit lit that on fire and he was able to go from there to the cross with the fire of God in his life. Amen. How many of you know you're going to need some fire? Amen. Amen. Second pressing, it begins to then create an oil. Not an oil that burns, but an oil that is able to then use for healing. It's for healing. Uh, uh, or, and then the third oil, if you take olives and you press them the third time, it's for cleansing. And so Jesus went through all those for us. And so we want to be excited and then begin to then participate. How many know that faith is what pleases God? And so just hearing the word and not making application of it will not move you forward. You've going to have to say, I believe that. Okay? And as you begin to do that, then God's word begins to work on our behalf. Um, Brother Steve came in, and that was a great set of services. How many guys uh, made several of those services? Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thought that was awesome. And so we were able to uh, see some prophetic. I've never had the guest speaker uh, slain in the spirit. I haven't decided yet, but he sent me a gif with him Pat, being slain in the spirit. Just, you just watch it over and over and over and over. And I'm just sitting there on my knees. And, and, and anyway, it was funny. I've sent it to some of the elders and uh, Eric said he just laughed and laughed and laughed. And so uh, I wasn't really sure if that was real spiritual or not. So that's why I haven't released it. But he sent it to me, okay? So it wasn't me making fun of it. So anyway, I, I, I do remember uh, seeing him go out in the spirit and just go on and start praying for people. And it wasn't until I finished the last one, I thought, is he dead? Should we check on him? And so if it's watched on YouTube enough, then, you know, I may be coined as the shameful pastor that walked past his dead buddy to finish praying for those that were sick. (laughs) Amen. How many know that wasn't what happened? So there's a prophetic word. The reason I said all that was there a prophetic word that I felt like the Lord dropped in my heart. I think it was that night. And I saw this trough. A trough is like a, 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 you know, two pieces of 
steel or metal and be able to pour water into it and let it go down from here to another area. But I saw this trough full of the oil of the Spirit. And I saw it, I, the, where I saw it was it was, it was going, it was leaving. It was, it, was, it was coming out of your resources and then going into your home. And then uh, once it had met, went into the house and saturated the home, then the Holy Spirit lit it on fire. And it just... And so uh, I realized that I was in the wrong movie because it felt like that that was in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, but it is in National Treasure, right? And I would play that, and I, have, I, I wanted to play it, but if we do that, it stops the streaming because of rights and different things like that. So go home and watch it because uh, it's so amazing. When they show up into this place that has all these treasures, you can only see but a little. And everybody is uh, looking at the treasures according to their own desire. One lady's looking at the history. And then another guy is uh, looking at a gold coin that uh, his father had talked to him about. And then there was the guy that, uh, he reminds me of Scooby-Doo, or who was the, Shaggy? Reminds me of Shaggy. I don't, know, I don't even know why he's in the movie. I guess for comic relief. And he goes and hugs this Pharaoh statue. Oh, Okay, anyway. But it's the last guy, the guy that actually realized there's more to this. His focus is not on what's going on. He reaches over and sees this pedestal full of oil and then looks and there's a trough down there. And, you know, I'm not sure why you do this, but it sounds like an explosion about to happen. And he ignited it and it lit that trough and it just went, it seemed for miles and began to just spread out and it exposed the goodness of the majesty of the treasure they had really found. And so that prophetic word, I feel like, is that the Father is taking the pressing that we went through 2020, and now he is, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the fire of the Holy Spirit, is igniting it, and it's going to begin to light your homes. It's going to begin to allow the light of God to shine into the dark corners. What was darkness, which we talked about, it's not always sin. Darkness is the areas where you just don't know that you're going to begin to see some areas in your life that you have not had an understanding on or know what to do or how to approach it, that in this season, everybody say, in this season, I'm going to begin to see. Kind of trailed off on me there. In this season, I'm going to begin to see. Amen, amen. So we're done with that. So we'll, we'll go on. Uh, so we were going to go to a new series. And so this new series is called Breaking Mindsets. Breaking mindsets. Do you know that a study says that um, by the time you're 18, you have heard the word no 148,000 times. 148,000 times. It creates a mindset. Mindset. Everybody say mindset. There's mindsets that need to be broken. But just as we had the uh, prophetic word that came, it says tipping point. We also realized that as the prophet began to expound on that, Dennis Kramer, is that tipping point could be a positive or it could be a negative. And did you not realize that uh, mindsets, breaking mindsets, could be a positive or a negative? Some of you, you have uh, no mindset of the fact that the Father is always there to bring life and life abundant. Because all you've experienced is the negative things in life. So therefore, you have a negative mindset that needs to be destroyed. Yeah. Not just broken, but destroyed. But then some of us that we understand that the Father is wanting to bring us life and life more abundantly. But yet now the enemy is coming in and trying to get you to destroy that mindset. Yeah. Are you seeing what I'm saying? He's trying to bring doubt and unbelief into our lives so that we begin to operate in that. So then you take a uh, pandemic and then a bunch of other stuff that comes along with it. I mean... <laughs> Uh, and then you get your eyes off of what's really going on in your life and begin to look at everything that's going on in the world, and it's an incubator for fear. And so there's this point, as a pastor, my heart goes out because I don't want to uh, discredit the fear because the fear is real. It's real. It's tangible. Right now, it's so real, you can cut it with a knife. Amen. But it's not the truth. It's just not the truth. It, is, it was a fact that Lazarus died, but it wasn't the truth. Come on. Because Jesus had to show up. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. Are, 
okay? So there's been a lot of things in your life that you could look at and say, well, that was the fact. But then when Jesus showed up, the truth began to show up. And so uh, we need to allow the Holy Spirit through this series. And I want you to really, we're still in our fast. I want you to continue to uh, seek the Lord and ask him, Lord, I know that according to Pastor Mike, that you said that, that the oil of the Holy Spirit is flowing into my house and the Holy Spirit has ignited it. And now I ask you to begin to light and expose any wrong mindsets that I have. And then if I have some strong, good mindsets, then I want you to reinforce those. I want to walk in some freedom and power. Well, not just in my own house, but now I want to take those and then minister to others. Amen. You know, up to 1954, no one had ever ran a four-minute mile. You go back and research it. Uh, I'm trying to remember the guy's Bar Barnett, Barnett, Barnett. Anyway, I can't pronounce the guy's name. Or I, I wrote it down, but I just the name is not. It is important because he broke the four-minute mile. He ran it at 3.54, 3.59. But up to that point, everybody's mindset was that the physical body could not run a four-minute mile. In fact, nine years prior to him breaking it, uh, one guy ran a 4.1, and they said, well, that's as far as anybody can ever run. That's as fast as I can run. But this guy said, no, I'm going to break that mindset. Okay, are you? So then once, it's amazing, though, is that it was nine years that the record stood at 4.1. But when this guy shows up and he runs a 3.59 or 3.4.3, okay, anyway, that's too many points. <laughs> then do you know what was the next 30 years is broken 16 times? How many know that there's some strong mindsets? That if there's just a strong mindset just in that, in that area, then we also realize there's going to be mindsets in our own life. Don't be foolish to think that there's no mindsets that you're dealing with in your life that you just don't know about. So this is a point I really feel like the Holy Spirit is willing to just explore and let us begin to see the mindsets that we've placed in our lives. You know, I had a mindset. I had uh, years for years, I always felt like I was short. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that giggle on the front row. Who says 5'4 is too short? There, you see what I'm saying? So there's some mindsets that have been placed in some of us, probably clear back to our childhood, that God's wanted to deliver us from. So this is the definition of mindset. Mindset is a belief and it's attitudes, processes, beliefs, attitudes, or processes. The individuals and organizations utilized to interact with circumstances. The definition of the Greek word translated mindset is a way of thinking. How many know that you've just got a way of thinking? Well, that's just the way I do things. Colossians 2 verse 8 begins to talk about this. Colossians 2 verse 8 says, Beware that no one distracts you. Had a great series we talked about distractions. There's... Uh, distractions of the flesh there's distractions of the soulish realm and there's distractions that are heavenly <laughs> how many know you want some heavenly distractions for example when we were talking about a spirit of fear all that was was a heavenly distraction all right let me try that how many of you guys have ever had a kid? I've told this story many times and you'll begin to just jump right on board. How many of you have had a kid or it's possibly in your own life that you got a sticker in your foot? Right? And as a parent, you begin to hear from the outside and your inside, you sound like somebody lost a limb. <laughs> and you go running out there thinking that things are just horribly gone wrong. But to come find out, they got a little sandbar in their foot. And then you go to reach down to try to pull the sandbar, and they, <laughs> you know, I mean, they're all worked up and everything, and they pull the foot away from you because they don't, they don't understand that it's the love that you're coming to to remove the pain. But what do you got to do? I mean, after you attempt to try to get it out because they're all been worked up over this situation, it's finally you just got to do like a parent and say, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Look at me. Look. I need some parents give me some. Yeah. 
Look at me. Look at me in the eyes. Look at me in the eyes. And what are you doing? You're trying to get their eyes off the situation. So we spent a whole year and we're still in it. And as the enemy is saying, look here, look here. He's trying to get your eyes off the master and on, on that situation. But then what happens is, is that you're talking to them and they're, <laughs> and you pull the sticker out and you look, hey, I already took care of it. And they're like, oh my gosh. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is trying to do to us. He's try, there's some mindsets that need to be broken. You don't realize it. That's been causing you some strife. It's causing you anxiety and depression. And he's saying, let me take and bring some healing to your life. Let me break these. Colossians 2 verse 8. Let's go back. Beware that no one distracts you and intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness. NBC. See, anyway, okay. By pretending to be full of wisdom. And when they're filled with endless arguments of human logic... When we deal with the pandemic, it's, it's human logic. Everybody say human logic. He says, for they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of the world. Say, wow. <laughs> and not anointed, not the anointed truce of the anointed one. Uh, one translation or actually the commentary of this, it says that they are trying to strip you naked. Because if, they, if the enemy can strip you naked and you begin to operate according to the way he feels that you should be feeling, then you are hopeless. Romans 8, verse 5 through 7. These are real heavy scriptures on the first end of this because uh, just building the foundation for mindsets, breaking the mindsets. You need to see what a, a, a fleshly mindset is and what a spiritual mindset is. Romans 8, 5 through 7, out of the Passion. It says, those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to, purpose, or to pursue spiritual realities. For the mindset, everybody say mindset. The mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and peace. You ever been driving somewhere and all of a sudden your car starts sputtering and you're like, <laughs> what is the first thing you look at? Gas gauge. Or all of a sudden you see uh, white uh, smoke coming out of the underneath the hood. What do you do? You look at the, ga the gauge for the temperature on your engine. If you find yourself not walking in life and peace and it's the opposite of that, you need to look at the spiritual gauge and realize, I've got a wrong mindset. Is that Okay. So it goes on, it says, in fact, the, the mindset focused on the flesh fights. Huh? Okay, I'm just going to start preaching to myself. Hmm, God, that looks good. I like that. But the mindset focused on the flesh fights against God's plans. Don't, Lord, I don't want that in my life. I need your plan. Oh, my gosh, I need your plan to operate. In my, and refuses to submit to his direction because it cannot. What did the prophet say? Follow and submit and follow, submit and follow. But if I got a mindset that's standing between me and my submission to follow his direction, God's plan is coming to a point where it's at a halt. How many of you guys want God's plan to, to flourish in your life, right? I just thought that was a powerful set of scriptures. Isaiah 26 verse 3 is really what uh, the started as I began to think about this one. Uh, this is the Amplified. He says... Uh, you will guard him, in other words, God will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind is both its inclination and its character is stayed on God. It's hard, it's hard, let me just tell you this, it's hard in this busy little world to try to keep your focus stayed on God. Because right here, it says he keeps us in perfect peace, those who are stayed on God. It goes on, it says, because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. I don't know about you, but that's the mindset I need. Looking unto the Father, looking unto him, the author and the finisher of my faith. Colossians 3, verse 2 through 3, it says, Set your mind, everybody say, set my mind, 
on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Huh. Set your mind. Come on, set your mind. How do we do that with a little kid when they get the, they're freaking out over the sticker? I'm just going to say it. COVID is but a sticker. I don't know if you could say that in your own life right now, but I'm saying it. COVID is but a sticker. Say, but what if I get COVID and I die? You got Jesus in your heart? Yeah. <laughs> you get to go be with Jesus. It's still a sticker. He took the sting of death away from me. I don't have to worry about it. I told you several months ago or a year ago, whatever, that I felt like I'd possibly, Tamara thought I died. It was a great place. There is no pain. There's no sting to death. Hmm. Colossians, that's where we're at, says set your mind on things above and, and not on things of theirs. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Now, I know this has got my little energy drink in it. And sometimes uh, I don't always need it, but I just like the taste of it. But if I was to go to the ocean, and, and I tell this story occasionally because you need to understand about being hidden into Christ. This is a great little illustration. And then we're going to have to get really cooking along here. Um, when I was a little kid, I went deep sea fishing with my mom and dad, or my dad and my other two brothers. And so we're out in the middle of the ocean. I mean, we saw, I mean, we're just, we're, we're cruising out there. And we saw flying fish. We saw sea turtles. We saw sharks. We saw uh, dolphins. I mean, it's like, it's like the whole ocean, it was just steaming or steaming uh, streaming with life whatever you call it we just saw a bunch of bunch of things we just don't see in oklahoma <laughs> you know what i'm talking about call lake doesn't have any sea turtles and so we were we were just enjoying it and so we get out there and we're fishing and and i, I got to enjoy the fact that a big fish about pulled my daddy overboard uh and and this big guy kept saying uh, pump it chuck pump it and he's like i'm just trying to keep from losing your pole <laughs> i mean it just about took him over and so um so then we come back. Well, my mama didn't go. And so let's say that as we're coming in, I take a bottle of water, uh, empty bottle, and I reach down and I fill it full of water. And then I come back and tell my mama how beautiful it was. Look at that. That's ocean water. Man, we saw this and we saw that. But and she'd look at it and go, that just looks like water. But the beauty of it is not when it's just water separated from the actual beauty of the ocean. It only becomes more beauty when it becomes more beautiful or comes back to its beauty when I take it and pour it back into the ocean. That's you being hidden in Christ. You by yourself, you look just like a person. <laughs> but hidden in Christ, you look like him. If I separate you from the body, then I can attack you. But if I pour this into the ocean, I don't even know where to find you. Come on, guys. Are you seeing that? That means when you begin to stop and take the, relev the revelation of the fact that you are hidden in Christ, COVID can't find you. I'm just preaching myself happy. Okay. As we hide ourselves... It breaks a mindset of the fact that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and that Jesus doesn't bring life and life more abundant. It breaks that mindset in our lives. Philippians 2, uh, two verse 5. It says, And consider the example that Jesus, the anointed one, has set up or set before us. Let his mindset become your motivation. What motivation is feeding your mindset is what I want to ask. Breaking mindsets of the flesh or being deceived and breaking mindsets of the spirit. In other words, we talked about how it, you could be a mindset of the flesh or a mindset of the spirit. The enemy's coming in trying to destroy the mindsets you have in the spirit. Already you've got some revelation in some areas, but now all of a sudden the enemy's coming against that and saying, yeah, that's just what is written in the Bible. That doesn't mean it happens in my life. Let me give you some, let me, we're going to jump into our notes real quick here. Everybody say Diablos. It's the Greek word for devil. See, you know what I'm saying? And what's really interesting is Diablos is really not a noun, it's a verb. 
And so in other words, what, the, what it says through this, by saying Diablos, the enemy, is what it's saying is this is what he does. Die, Diablos, die, the first part of that is what the, he says that he is constantly coming at you fervently. Ablos, or the last part of that word, it says that he's trying to create a penetrate or cause or build a highway through your mind. And so I just see this. It'd be like if I was had Eric stand up here and uh, he would let me. Uh, we'd put a, a football helmet on him, and then I would take this big uh, landscaping nail and a sledgehammer, and I would just nonstop, everywhere he walked, I would just take that nail and try to just pound it through the helmet. But that's my objective. If that was my objective, and all I had was a one nail and one hammer, then that would mean that that's the only thing I can do. Then that's the description of the ablos and the di- diablos. The p- first part of it is the fact that I never stop. Some of you think that you're special because only the enemy attacks you in the mind. That's the devil. That's his description. He's going to constantly be pounding on you until he can then make penetration. And then it says that once he makes penetration through the mind, through the, through the thoughts, then what he does then is he begins to expand the highway. So he then can take other thoughts and then begin to run them through there. But the next thing you know, you've got semis. <laughs> And they're driving right through your mind. Can anybody, can you bear witness with this a little bit? No wonder he was called Diablos. It's an action. But see, in this life, what we need to do is what we begin to find out. If you're a football player, you need to know your enemy. Some of you, you watch football film and football films and football films until you just almost fell asleep. Why? Because you needed to know who, what, who you're playing against next week so that you know what their strategy was so that when you showed up on the field, that then you could then offset that strategy and then begin to win in that game. Well, this is what we want to do today. We've exposed the enemy. We've exposed how he thinks and what he, how he does it. But now we want to then begin to look at some of the tools that he uses. So that we begin to understand. All right? So let me read you this. This is from uh, Rick Renner. I thought it was really powerful. It says, it says, the name devil, Diablos, is not only a proper name for this arch enemy of faith, but it also denotes a mode of operation. The devil is one that strikes repeatedly again and again until he finally breaks down a person's mental resistance. Once the person's mental resistance has been breached and the enemy then strikes with all his fury to penetrate and to take captive a person's mind and emotions. If the enemy can find you with your guard down, he will then try to pave a road into your mind, which means method. He has a method. The paving of the road is a strategy. Everybody say strategy. That's the first one we're going to talk about. But if he can get a strategy, his strategy is if he can just get into your mind, you begin to take captive the thoughts of fear, take captive those things, then so he can confuse your emotions with mind games. His goal is to deceive you. That's the second part of his strategy. He has strategies and deception. Strategy, if you're King James, it would have been, the, you guys have heard this, the wiles of the enemy. Has anybody heard that? Right? It's, it's translated strategy or the wiles of the enemy. That's the first one. That's his, that's his strategy. The second one is deception. He wants to deceive you to the point that you can actually begin to believe his threats. If he succeeds, your false perceptions will empower his lies to become reality in your life. So this is what we want to look at, breaking the mindsets of the flesh and being aware of your enemy's tactics. So the first one is aware of the enemy's strategies. Ephesians 6, verse 10. It's gone a lot faster than I thought it would. Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 11, it says, this is the New Living Translation. It says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Now, when COVID first broke out and different things happened in my life, the Lord, in fact, when we came over here, this is a scripture that was running over and over in my mind three years ago when we came from Enid over to here. 
I don't know if people realize the battle we had to fight. We were the fourth transition. You didn't know Tamara and I from Adam. As far as I know, we were going to come up the first Sunday. We came over here and uh, Pastor Kirk said, uh, here's your new church. Uh, World Harvest is going to take over and we're out of here. As far as, and then I preached the next Sunday. Dude, I had to take, I had to, I had to come against some stuff driving over here. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm coming to an empty church today. Tamara, I hope you're not saved because I'm going to lead you to Jesus today. Because I need at least one person to accept Jesus today. Because <laughs> I just figured we were going to come over and be nobody. So we had to fight through the mental uh, agony of the fact that we were coming in here and no one knew us. And that we were just going to preach the gospel. We were going to preach the love of God. And that we were just going to love on you. And look where we're at now today. Uh, and we even, we survived through a pandemic. <laughs> So we had to say, I'm strong in the Lord. My, this is what I would say. My emotions are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I took it out of my doing. I know I can't do it, but I'm going to need some help, God, because I'm driving all the way over here, and I don't even know if anybody's going to show up. I got strong emotions in the Lord and the power of your might. I got a strong immune system in the Lord and the power of his might. So whatever you feel like you're like, I got strong thinking. I, got, I think about the love of God. I have no fear in my life. I got strong love that's working in my life right now because of the power of his might. You just put whatever you feel like that you need to put in there. See, then the Lord says, I want you to begin to, to use that scripture. And then he goes on and says, put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm. Everybody say, stand firm. I just do that. Make sure you're still awake. Stand firm against all the strategies, strategies, or the wiles of the devil, the strategies of the devil. Now listen to this. The word strategy or wiles, however you want to say it, the minute translation you're in, the Greek word is methodos. Man, you don't have to be a Greek scholar to kind of think, oh, that almost sounds like method. Greek, Greek scholars didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right. So it methodos. This is, a, this is where we get the English word method. It's often translated to carry the idea of something that is cunning, crafty, subtle, or full of trickery. However, the most basic translation of this word is literally meaning with a road. That's his strategy. You need to hear the rest of this. This is going. Plainly means that the enemy travels on one road, one lane, or one avenue. This is where it gets good. I expect to hear some hallelujah shouting on this. In other words, he primarily has only one trick in his bag. <laughs> hallelujah. And obviously, he's learned to use it very well. This one trick he does really well. You thought all hell was breaking loose coming against you, but it wasn't. It was just one trick. <laughs> he just trying to, okay, take your hands and put them like this. All your problems are between your two hands at this very moment. That's it. That's why he says that you have a helmet of salvation. It protects you from that. But if you're not walking in faith and believing that that's protecting you from it, then you're allowing him to build a one-lane highway and then a two-lane and a three-lane and a 12-lane. And then it begins to produce fruit in your life. Hmm. Second point, we need to be aware of his devices. So strategies. He's only got one lane. And he's trying to penetrate your mind with his thoughts. If, that, if those thoughts, which we'll get to it, if they don't line up with the word of God, what are you supposed to do? Take captive of those thoughts. So we need to be aware of the enemy's devices. Listen to this, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11. Paul had already started talking about which is kind of crazy in this chapter uh, about forgiving this man. Well, this man that was right before this chapter, or right in this verses before this, he'd been sleeping, if I, if I remember right, 
he'd been sleeping with his uh, stepmom. Yeah, ooh. And so the church corrected him. And then they took correction too far. And Paul says, no, you need to forgive him and bring him back in. Because if you don't, if you don't forgive him, then this will begin to happen. He says, lest Satan should take advantage of us. Unforgiveness is, a, is, a, is pretty hard. We just don't realize it. Unforgiveness, by you not forgiving others, it's giving the enemy advantage over you. So lest Satan should take advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. Let me say this before we go to devices and talk about that word. Golly, it fails to... Re- I don't remember this young lady's name. Hmm. She's got a ministry, a healing ministry. And uh, if somebody... This rings a bell. Holler out her name. Um, she can lay hands on people and if they've had a broken bone and had a plate that God, di- that plate disappears. Katie so- Souza. Souza? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Souza, Souza. All right. Now listen to this. Now, she was doing this healing ministry and she began to pray over people and people were getting supernaturally healed. And this is like from eight in the morning to about noon and then everybody went home or went to lunch and came back and she says, all right, I need to uh, people that got healed, I want you to stand up. So they, they stood up. How many of you are, you were 100% healed, but now you're beginning to uh, only be about 50% healed and you're kind of, feels like your healing's kind of walking away from you. And there were several people that rose their hand. And then she called out one lady. She's like, uh, Miss, yeah, you, come up here. What God healed you of? Oh, uh, this, this, I don't remember what it was. He says, well, where, where are you at now? Well, I'm about 40%. Where when I went to lunch, I was, I was 100%. And this is what she said by the Spirit of the Lord. You've been talking trash about somebody. And she just began to break down and cry because what she realized is by the Spirit of the Lord, he revealed that at lunch, she started talking trash about somebody. And because of that, unforgiveness was in her heart and it allowed the enemy to take advantage of her life. So you need to let this spirit, this time that we're in, you begin to start praying, Lord, if I got unforgiveness in my heart, I want you to reveal it. And I need to take care of it because I do not want the enemy to take advantage of me. The word devices is notameo, which actually predicts an insidious plot and wicked schemes of Satan to attack and victimize, victimize the human mind. One expositor had even stated that the word devices bears the notion of mind games. Who taught on chatterbox? Uh, Stephen Furtick. If I remember right, that chatterbox dealt with the, taking dominion over or taking control over your thoughts. Mind games. With this in mind, you could translate the verse, we are not ignorant of the mind games that Satan tries to pull on us. I know this is a shouting, getting up and running around the church sermon. I know that. Hallelujah. It'll hit you when you get home. You run around the house and run into your furniture and fall over and lay on the floor, get drunk in the Holy Spirit. And text me later. Because it'll happen in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 10, verse 5. This is where we, we want to go to. It says, you can demolish every deceptive fantasy. I loved it in the Passion Bible. I wanted you to hear it this way. Uh, we've, most of us, memorized it to take control of our thoughts, take them, bring them into captivity, bring them into the obedience of Christ. But listen to how the the Passion Translation uh, brought this out. It says, so we can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God's breakthrough. Oh, gosh. Hallelujah. Opposes God's breakthrough. Every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance in the true knowledge of God, we capture like a prisoner of war. 
every thought and insists that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. Can you imagine that? Golly. Many of you, you already having thoughts right now. You can just, I'm going to just start saying, no, I, I command you to bow to the obedience of the anointed one. There's some power in that. I got a little anxiety about my job. It's fixing to start tomorrow. Uh, you, Lord, those thoughts, you bow to the name of Jesus, Amen. the anointed one. I'm worried about that test that, that I'm going to have to take tomorrow. And I'm not really sure what that's going to say. But you know, no matter what that doctor says, that it, the Bible says that Every word that man speaks is a lie, but everything that God says is the truth. He may expose the fact, but I'm so thankful, Jesus, that you're the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm not going to, I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to understand. I'm going to say thank you, and then I'm going to give him half my checkbook. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to, and if I die, praise the Lord, I just get to go home early. But then a lot of us in this room, you don't need to go home early because you got some things you need to get done. Man, because someday down the road, if you do go home early, when I show up, I'm going to say, hey, dude, when you left, we had to take over for you. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to finish what God's called me to do here on this world. Right? And so that means I got to understand what the schemes of the enemy are so that I can then begin to stand strong against him in my faith and resist him. <sighs> so here, here we go. I felt like I wasn't supposed to get real excited. I'm supposed to just teach you this. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, which I know was a big change from last weekend. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, I can grab a microphone. We can, I can come pretty close to that. <laughs> okay. So we can demolish every deceptive fantasy that poses God, break through every arrogant attitude. I just want to read this again. And it is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God, we capture, we capture, we, 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 we capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bows to the obedience of the anointed one. The devil loves to make a playground out of people's minds. He delights in filling their emotions and senses with illusions that captivate their minds and ultimately destroy them. He is the master when it comes to mind games. Let me ask you this. Um, I don't even remember how long ago, several years ago. I started having chest pains. And so you're just kind of like, mm, you know, guys were like, ah, it's just pizza I ate or something, you know, heartburn or whatever. And then it got pretty intense. And then I'm like, whoa, that's, that, I ain't never had that pain before. And so I'm dealing with these emotions like, uh, I'd go to bed and I'd like roll over and kiss her. I was like, I may see you in the morning, I might not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so it was pretty intense. And she got, she just left. She get raptured. <laughs> we missed it. You know, Tamara, she would have made it, right? <laughs> I only tell these stories for her, dear Lord. She's not here. I don't even want to tell it now. <laughs> Where was I at? So I, I thought it was uh, bronchitis is what I thought it was. We were at the new church there in Enid, and they had, they were, they had just all kinds of dust, and they were plowing and working dirt around there, and it, was just, it seemed like it made it worse. And so I'm, I'm taking some stuff for bronchitis, whatever. And so it just kept going on. And finally, I was like, you know, I probably need to go to the doctor and have this checked out. So well, they did an EKG on me, and they're like, oh, hey, we got issues. Well, for one, your blood pressure is, uh, what was it, 168 over, I don't know, it was just like way high. And uh, so we're going to have to, your blood pressure is way too high. And so we're going to give you this medication. I'm like, all right. And so then they said, well, you got an enlarged heart and you got blockage here and you got blockage here and, and this doesn't look good. And so uh, that's a good thing you came in. So I'm like, wow, hallelujah. So I began to start taking the blood pressure medicine. That was awesome. Because I didn't realize that with blood pressure that high, how uh, all of a sudden you came, became more beautiful. Because <laughs> I didn't feel like my head was going to blow up. So then I go to an, a specialist and they're like, well, okay, yeah, we need to put a stand in here and there. And I said, well, we don't have insurance. It's like, we'll get back to you. I don't know how it's been a long time. Never got back to me. <laughs> 
So I started making some lifestyle changes and quit eating this, quit eating that, and started blending up parsley for breakfast. I, you know, just crazy stuff. But I feel better. I feel better. And the Lord weaned me off. I'm getting somewhere with this, okay? The Lord weaned me off of uh, high blood pressure medicine. I don't recommend it. If you do it, it's going to be based on what God told you to do, not based on what I said from the stage. You need to walk in your faith, not my faith. You see what I'm saying? And so as I begin to do that, and now I have great blood pressure. It's like 120 over 60. And I don't, I've not, the Lord healed me of that. Okay? But the chest pains kept coming up. They just kept coming up. And so I thought, Lord, I don't, I don't know what to do with this. And so I'm praying about it. And then the very next day, my daddy, Chuck Sturgeon, he calls me. He says, I feel like I uh, need to tell you this. Uh, I felt like the Lord told me this to tell you that those chest pains are lying symptoms. Everybody say lying symptoms. Now, it's my daddy. You know, I'm like, thank you, Dad. Well, that kind of hurts my heart because it still hurts. And you're telling me, oh, you know what I'm saying? It's like. I don't know what to do with this. It's kind of like uh, trying to tell somebody, don't be afraid of COVID. Uh, there's been a lot of people die. Oh, you see what I'm saying? So you're, you're wrestling with this in your mind. So I'm praying about it. I'm like, Lord, I know my dad told me this for a reason. I need some understanding on that. I always love it when he shows up and just beyond your wisdom and it's like he, he just all of a sudden he just dropped this in my heart. This is a lying symptom. I see that. That's what my dad told me. That you told him to tell me. Yes. And then all of a sudden I had this revelation. He said, have you ever been roller skating? Yes, sir. Did you ever take your roller skates off and for the next two or three hours you felt like you were still roller skating? Come on, guys. It's like looking at me like you never roller skated in your life. What do we call that? Lying symptoms. The enemy is so good at what he does. If you're not translating, are you seeing what I'm saying? That you can let the things of the physical realm become so real that they will become real in your life. So this is a device. So he's got a strategy. But we only, he's only got one strategy. He's trying to, to hammer a negative thought through your pea brain. And then for you to accept it, and then you, lets him then begin to put highways through there. Hmm. Did not the enemy come and deceive Eve? Did God say? Did God say? Are you see what I'm saying? He's been at this. I, I felt like Judas was deceived, right? But I think what he thought he was doing, it didn't turn out the way he thought it was. He was deceived. We need to stop listening to ourselves and start speaking to ourselves. How many times I'd look at you and I said, sometimes we just got to be the best preacher that we've ever heard. Yeah, go to YouTube and subscribe and like Harvest Stillwater, but I'm still going to tell you you're the best preacher you ever heard. Why is that? Because whenever you begin to let his word come alive and living in you, and you get a, a logos, goes from logos to rhema. In other words, it goes from just written letters on a page to something that's living inside of you. Then when you begin to speak to that situation, then it begins to listen to you. It's no different than when I began to walk through needed healing for uh, kidney stones and three so more years into this. And uh, the Lord brought some homeopathic medicine to me and I, 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 I passed some stones with that. Then the next set of stones came along and then all of a sudden the herbs didn't work, right? And so then what happened then the Lord says, he says, you need to, you need to start growing in your faith. So he spoke these words to me. He says, did I not roll the stone of death away from the tomb? I mean, you see where he's going with this. Could I not roll a kidney stone? <laughs> Dude, I was excited. What? All of a sudden, what was just a written word became a logos word. Amen. Amen. You can stand on your feet. <laughs> it 
He's the great physician. Now that also means not only a physical doctor ministering to your physical body, but a psychiatrist. He can minister to your, phys to your, to your mind, to your soulish realm. And, and to let him then with some of these issues. For you to just be real literal about it. Go home and sit down. I said, Dr. Jesus, I've made an appointment. <laughs> My brain is swelled up with fear. My brain is hurting from anxiety. Whatever it is. God, I got this issue in my physical flesh. According to Ephesians 2, verse 8, I'm seated with you in heavenly places. Hallelujah. And the word says that you are the great physician. And so I let you write me a prescription. And as you begin to study the word and let his word come to you, then just be silent there. Be still and know that he's God. Let him begin to speak to you. Let him give you a prescription for your situation. Hmm. We didn't get to that last one that talks about the enemy's deception. You know, Peter was deceived, denied Christ three times. But I love what it said. When Jesus looked at Peter and said Satan is sifting you but I've prayed for you that when you return to the, when you when you get we start walking in some forgiveness for what you felt like you had done he didn't really tell Peter what was going to happen but he was already prophetically speaking over his life he says return to the brothers in other words bring what the Lord did for you in your life and then show up in somebody else's life and, and minister to them because this is just the deception of the enemy. I'm going to read this first, then we'll close with this. Altar workers, if you want to come down. At one point I had a lot of time, and now I don't. I've been deceived. Matthew 24, verse 4 through 8, Jesus said this. He, Jesus answered, he says, at that time, deception will run rampant. I want you to just think back to where we're at right now. Think about all that is coming across the news. And said it at that time, I almost want to put in, uh, in 2020 and 2021, deception will run rampant. So beware that you are not fooled. For many will appear on the scene claiming my authority and saying about themselves, I am God's anointed. And they will lead many astray. You will hear of wars and nearby, uh, wars nearby and revolutions on every side and more rumors of wars to come. Don't panic or give in to your fears for the breaking apart of the world system, hallelujah, is destined to happen. It's already going to happen, folks. So don't be worrying about, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? This, it's going to happen. Just go. Just keep doing what you're doing. It's going to break. It's going to break. Jesus said it's going to break. It's just a sticker. <laughs> but it won't yet be the end. This is even more better news. <laughs> it's still unfolding. Nations will go to war against each other and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be terrible earthquakes, seismic events of epic proportion, horrible pandemics. I didn't add that in there. Famines in places after places, and this is the first contraction. It's just the first contraction. But you know what? If I'm contracting, it's not because I'm trying to get rid of what I ate for lunch. Well, if you're in contraction, you are pregnant. And if you're pregnant, you're about to birth something 
And it was, I think, Monday night, and the Spirit of the Lord told me, he says, I want you to tell the people that I'm wanting to birth a testimony. It's what a season to be going through. Something comes against you, and you go, ah! I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Oh, I feel that contraction. I'm birthing a testimony in Jesus' name. Where's that putting you? Putting you on the side of faith. Are you see what I'm saying? So this is the first contraction and the birth pains of a new age will begin. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I just pray over our people and over myself and those that are watching online. Father, I just, Father, I thank you for your word. You get home today, I want you to look up First Samuel, just chapter 17, and read about how De, how Goliath is standing there as the deceiver. He had one. He had he had several weapons with him but what did he do he threatened the children of Israel with words only for 40 days and they went and hid behind rocks like little kids what a representation of what the enemy is trying to do in our lives he's just shouting from the battlefield calling his names but it took one young man named David that stood up and began to speak back he began to say, just like I told you, is to stop talking to yourself or stop talking about the situation. Start talking to yourself. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for that anointing. As we begin to stand up, we begin to speak like David did and across the battle lines, begin to look at the enemy. Whatever it is, there, every one of us has got an enemy in our life that's going and trying to steal, kill, and destroy as we begin to look across that and begin to say, I'm coming out to get you because by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to deliver the people. I'm going to deliver myself and I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to feed you to the birds of the air. And Father, I thank you, Lord. Father, as we just begin to then run through 2021, allowing you to break. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for revelation of you in my own life, Father, that you begin to break old mindsets mindsets of rejection i feel like there's some people in this room that you've been rejected because of the rejection in your heart that you've not allowed people to come close you wanted people come close in fact you think the people are are rejecting you but it's the fact that you're operating in rejection which is then going before you and the lord says i want to heal you of that i want to break you free from the spirit of rejection once you begin to operate in the fact that Jesus was rejected so that you could be accepted as you then begin to see yourself in the acceptance of Christ that those relationships that you desire will begin to come your way and I'm wanting to minister life and health to you life and health father we thank you for those words father we thank you for those words bow your heads close your eyes if you're in this place and you've never accepted Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and you want to just raise your hand Say, Pastor Mike, that's me. I need forgiveness of my past. I need a new beginning. I need a hope for my future. If that's you, just wave your hand at me. I want to see who I'm praying for. All right, everybody look up here. I didn't see anybody raise their hand. If you need, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be down here. Uh, I want to pray with you. We had four over this last weekend that received baptism of the Holy Spirit. Awesome. We had a lot of people come forward to get free of some things. It just it was it was a fruitful weekend, and and I'm pretty excited about it. And so, um, if you want prayer for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna Wes is gonna come close out prayer. I'm gonna stand over here. Uh, you just come down and visit with me. We want, I want you to be walking in the power of that, especially in this day and time. Amen. Wes. Okay, thank you, Pastor Mike, for that mindset. And something to help with us to change our mindset is it, it, 
I feel like there's some people watching or maybe some people here that they doubt if prayer works. They've never seen prayer work in their life. And I told you about Diane and having to go into ICU. And her sodium was supposed to be at 140, but it was at 110. And the doctor said it'll take two or three or four days to get her sodium back up. Well, I was texting Pastor Mike and other people, and they were putting it on the prayer uh, list through the emails. And the next morning, they took her into ICU at 9 o'clock that night. The next morning, her sodium level was right where it was supposed to be. So prayer works. Prayer works. And if you're at home and you don't know, you feel like you don't know how to pray, that's a lie from the enemy. So if you just pray, just say, Lord, and just speak from the heart, because that's what he's looking at is your heart when you're praying. So if you're at home and you don't feel like you don't have anyone there to pray with you, pray for yourself. Speak those promises that the Bible speaks. So I'm going to close this out in prayer. If you need prayer, come down here and know that prayer works. It's worked in my life. It's worked in a lot of people's lives. But you got to exercise it. You can't just expect it to work and not do it. You got to do it. So, Father, we just thank you for this word this morning. We thank you for all these scriptures that speak about our mindset. We thank you, Father, that we can focus on you, that we can get our minds set on you, that we can set our mind on your promises. And all these things around us won't bother us anymore, Father. So, Father, I just pray that you bless us today, that as we go out this week, that we remember even every hour, Father, that we are reminded what's our mindset. Is our mindset on you or is our mindset on our issues? So, Father, I just pray that you bless us, that you encourage each and every person here this week and all the ones watching online, and that you just put a hedge of protection around each and every one of us throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are giving prophetic words back here today, so if you want a prophetic word, come back there, and uh, we'll prophesy over you from the Holy Spirit. So. I think this side. Thank y'all.